for being God, for being our one true God that we can trust and depend on and lean on. God, thanks for um, just always having um, wisdom and direction for us. Thank you for your spirit that guides us, encourages us, corrects us, and uh, uh, just spurs us on. And so help us to be... Um, morning we're uh doing jesus time like we always do sitting here at the kitchen table and we're uh, still going through luke and i'm just taking my time kind of reading through it and and picking out nuggets and stuff that sticks out to me and sharing them with you so this morning we're looking at uh, luke 6 uh 37 and 38 and i want to read it to you real quick and then just kind of unpack it together a little bit this morning uh, luke 6 37 says judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And so, this is one of those passages that brings up a subject that is one of the most um, both challenging and sort of confusing um, and even sort of misquoted, misguided uh, subjects when it comes to judging. Um, Christians who have grown up have a hard time understanding uh, judging. Um, it's sort of like, well, based on what Jesus says, we're not supposed to ignore sin. Clearly, he doesn't ignore sin. Um, and yet, we're not supposed to judge. And we're supposed to judge, but in a certain way, so that it's the way that's we're judged, right? And it gets a little confusing. And this is one of those passages where even non-Christians will quote it back to you and they'll say, wait a minute, I thought Christians were not supposed to be so judgmental. I thought Christians weren't supposed to judge. They may know nothing about the Bible. They may have no idea really who God is, but somehow they know to tell you that you're not supposed to judge. And they're kind of onto something a little bit. Because normally when a non-Christian is saying something like, hey, Christians aren't supposed to be judging, um, what they're seeing is normally Christians being kind of ungodly, unkind, um, and acting in a way that doesn't line up with what Jesus is teaching here. And so um, I recently have uh, read a book with some of the guys in a men's group um, and I learned a little bit more about this uh, idea of judging. And um, <clears throat> in here, it's a really neat thing because it's a, a picture of something that's a, a long-standing discussion long before even Jesus came along. In fact, like 120 years before Jesus, one of the earliest rabbis actually taught about judging. He said... Um, judge each person with the scales weighted in their favor. Judge each person with the scales weighted in their, their favor. And so this was a discussion that was going on amongst the Jews and the leaders of the Jewish religion long before Jesus was this, how do you judge people? And so this guy says, judge them with the scales weighted in their favor. And so it gives you this imagery of like the, an ancient marketplace where there was the weighted scales where you'd have the weights on one side and then the pan on the other side that you would pour the grain or seed or spices into. And you get this imagery where if you've got the weights over here, right, it's kind of like this. And the guy starts pouring the grain in and pouring the grain in. And all of a sudden it sort of levels out and it's like, okay, there's the fair that you're buying this amount of weight in this amount of grain and then the shopkeeper comes in and dumps some more on the scale and purposely gives you grain, gives you more so it weighs in your favor, right? To help you know, like he, he, he gave generously. And that's this imagery that Jesus is using. He's saying, when you judge someone, he says, um, he says that uh, it'll be given to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it'll be put into your lap. So it's the, he's calling back to this imagery of this scale that's weighted in uh, of the other person's favor. And so when you're judging someone's deeds, you want to judge them generously, right? Uh, in our world, uh, we say we give people the benefit of the doubt, right? We give them the benefit of the doubt. And in fact, it goes beyond giving somebody the benefit of the doubt. It, it's like 
abundantly assuming the best about someone else. That's the, that's the way that Jesus is talking about um, when it comes to judging, you're judging in their favor, even before you're sure of the outcome. And this guy uh, in the book, the gal that wrote this book, um, I'll put this in the comments and stuff and the details about it, but it's uh, uh, Walking the Dust with Rabbi Jesus. There's three of these books and they're awesome. And I want to share a parable with you that she shared that helps us get like a an everyday understanding. Like how do you actually live this big hearted lifestyle out? This this generous judging way of living. And I'm going to share this parable with you. So hang in there with me. It's kind of cool. It says a man worked on a farm for three years. And on the eve of the day of atonement, he went to his employer and asked for the wages to take home to his wife and children. But the farm owner said to him, I have no money to give to you. And the farmhand protested, well, give me some of the crops that I've helped grow. And he, the farmer replied, I don't have any. And the worker cried, well, then give me some of the sheep that I've helped to raise. And the farmer shrugged and said that he had nothing that he could give him. So the farmhand gathered up his belongings and went home with a sorrowful heart. After the holidays, the employer came to the farmhand's house with all of his wages, along with three carts full of extra gifts. They had dinner together and they ate, and the farm owner asked, When I told you I had no money, what did you suspect? I thought you had seen a bargain and used all your cash to buy it up, the worker replied. And, and what did you think when I said that I had no crops? Well, I thought perhaps they were all leased to others. And what did you think when I said I had no animals? Well, I thought that you may have dedicated them to the temple. Well, the farmer answered him, it was just this way. My son wouldn't study the scriptures and the day came to me and I had rashly dedicated, uh, in the day that you came to me, I had rashly dedicated all my possessions to God. But just a couple days ago, I was absolved of my vow so that now I can pay you. And as for you, just as you have judged me favorably, may the Lord judge you favorably. And so we just get this glimpse of rather than assuming the worst about people and assuming the worst about their motives or thinking you know what's going on inside their life and, and around them, we're looking at people and we're judging their deeds generously. Like we're, we're weighing the scale in their favor. And we approach every situation like that from the person that drives us nuts in traffic that's tailgating us and is right up on us and is getting us crazy. And it's like, rather than starting to like you know, steam up inside with this frustration and anger. We're looking at the person and we're going, man, they must be really in a hurry. Maybe something's going on with their family. Maybe they got a terrible phone call. Maybe they woke up and then slept through the alarm clock like I've done 10 times, right? Like you, you, you assume the best and judge them generously. And so um, that's kind of the food for thought for the day is, is to start practically adjusting your way of thinking like um, this isn't theory this isn't just like this is a nice idea to wrestle with this is a go try it out uh, in the days to come judge people generously um, that's going to be the people that you live with your kids your spouse your neighbors your workers the people that you're listening to rant on social media judge people generously and assume the best and see if it doesn't start to change your outlook on life and your attitude. And most importantly, according to Jesus, it's going to set the tone for how God judges you. Just like in the parable, the farmer says, the way you judge me, may the Lord judge you with the same favor. And so um, I'm sharing this with you uh, because I want to set you up to be judged generously by our God. So that's the food for thought for the day. Have a fabulous sunny day. Let me pray for us and uh, we'll get off and on our way. All right, let's pray. God, we love you. We are so grateful for your word and for great teachers like uh, Lois that wrote this book and um, others, um, the historians that kept track of all these neat stories and parables. Um, God, thanks that uh, they... Um, round out our understanding of how to actually follow you in an everyday practical way. God, help us to be generous in our judgment and view of others. Help us to be gracious um, and kind 
and may you be the same way back to us. And so we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, uh, go ahead and have a fabulous Tuesday, and uh, we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 8.